Hey you all, Farmer Jesse here. Gonna talk a little bit today about how to choose the no-till system that works best for your farm. I guess I used to kind of think there would be maybe a universal system that would work, but I've changed my mind on that a little bit and I wanna talk about some of the things I've, I've realized and then some of the considerations to make when deciding on what sort of system works best for, your, for you, for you and your climate and all those things. So, let's do it. Real quick, before we get going, make sure to subscribe to the channel. That helps to be able to see when our videos come up. So if you like learning about no-till market gardening, that's a good idea. Also, check out the Patreon page. This is just a site that helps people patron what they love. So if you like these videos, if you like the podcast, uh, go check out patreon.com slash farmer jesse and consider signing up. We have to get that up to $1,000 a month to be able to afford a second season of the podcast. So I hope we can do that. All right, so the first big consideration when it comes to designing your sort of no-till system is your climate. And these are in no particular order. You kind of have to digest them all at the same time, but just think about all of these things and it may help you, you know, choose your own adventure. But the first thing you really have to think about is your climate. If you're in an arid climate, really your main consideration needs to be moisture control. Uh, you don't have to worry as much about rainfall, right? We have, especially this year, this past year, has been uh, really rainy. So we've seen issues with erosion in some of our deep mulch beds. So, but if you're in an arid climate, that deep mulch may preserve your moisture better. And if you're not getting heavy rain, so rainfalls consistently, it may not be as big of an issue as it is here. Whereas if you're in a more you know rainy environment, you may need to think about systems that rely less on a sort of exposed soil like that. You may need to think about um, controlling that a little bit more, maybe with cover crops, maybe with uh, deep you know, straw mulch or hay mulch or something like that, working in a system like that. But there's also, I should just go ahead and say from the outset, there's nothing wrong with hybridization. You could take two of these different systems, this is what we're really trying to do, pick the best crops that work really well with say your deep mulch system, which carrots, carrots work, work really well in that system. A lot of transplanting works well in the deep mulch system. There's, you know, you do have a lot of options in that way. So we'll talk about crops in a second, but in terms of hybridization, it's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, the next big thing to really consider are the materials or mulches that are available to you in your climate, in your area, specifically your region. So if you're, if you're in a region that is generally the big agriculture around there tends to be, say, rice, maybe you have access to a lot of rice straw, or maybe it's agroforestry or something, and there's a lot of wood chips. Maybe you could figure out some sort of composting system with the wood chips to get those to get under your garden. Maybe you have access to spent grains, maybe you have access to a lot of cardboard, maybe you have access to just a ton of compost or you know some sort of a lot of leaves a lot of people get leaves from their local municipalities that's awesome if you can get if you have access to leaves that that's a great resource so knowing what resources you have around you like we're in Kentucky we have horses everywhere so we have a lot of compost we have a lot of horse manure that's a byproduct of the in agricultural industry here it's just tons and tons of horse manure again these are in no particular order but the scale that you're working on will make will decide a lot of your no-till system. So if you're wanting to do acres and acres and acres, if you're wanting to do 20 acres of no-till vegetable production, or even grain or whatever it may be, you're gonna have to design a system that is maybe less compost reliant, or um, maybe not, maybe you have, maybe you live in Kentucky and you have tons of compost and you also have 20 acres you wanna farm, maybe that's an option for you. But you're definitely gonna wanna find a system that is geared towards your machinery, maybe the machinery you already have or the machinery that you're looking at and can afford. Uh, a roller crimper system may be great, but you also have to look at the drills and the transplanters and look and see if that it is within your capital, like within your budget. Because um, it may not be, some of that stuff is really expensive. So that will determine a little bit. Somebody 
left a comment on one of our posts recently on no-till growers on our Instagram, which you should, you're totally following that, so I don't have to tell you about that, but it said that they were gonna do sort of a JM Fortier market garden style on 16 acres of vegetables. Uh, using a rotary plow and a subsoiler and those sorts of things. So that kind of cool little minimal tillage option on a large scale is definitely a possibility too if you have the right equipment and you have the right uh, organizational skills and those sorts of things. So I think that's really interesting. And I should say that how your land lays will make some, some amount of impact in your decision here because if you have steep slopes, you're gonna need to either think about terracing them or think about things that are not gonna move when it in heavy rain falls. So if you lay flat or if you're in a flood zone, that is something to take into consideration too. You don't wanna lay down thousands of dollars worth of compost and have it come wash away. So you've gotta think about how you're gonna cover crop that maybe to keep that soil in place or, um, or what you're gonna do to make sure that you're not losing all that, all that effort, all that topsoil and all that, you know, mulch. Yet another thing about climate, I should just add this in here because I kind of forgot about it. In terms of climate, you also have to think about your temperature, right? It's not just about rainfall, it's about if you're up north, you may not want a light colored straw mulch in the springtime when it will just keep your soil cooler for longer. You may want to go with a dark compost uh, to keep to get that soil to warm up a little faster in the springtime. Whereas if you're in the south, you may want something that's lighter color that reflects the sun, doesn't pull it in and make your soil hot uh, to be able to get in in the springtime or all summer. or if you're in some place like we are in Kentucky where it's really cold winters but really hot summers, you may want to use a hybridization of that and we're actually thinking about getting a chipper shredder and running straw through it so that in the summertime I can cover our beds with a light colored straw and then plant lettuces and things into, into that as a mulch to keep us from uh, having like burning hot soil right underneath that lettuce, uh, which can be really hard on the lettuce and lots of different crops. So lastly, your crop selection is gonna be really important. Uh, if you're doing a lot of baby greens, you may not want to do anything that has anything to do with straw or hay, especially not hay because you end up with a lot of weed seed. In terms of baby greens, you may want to look at something that's either a deep mulch system or a no mulch system like Never Sink or Ace of Spades. I talk about them a lot. They don't use any sort of real strong cover material. They use a little peat moss and they use some soil balancing techniques, but they're not doing a deep mulch of compost. Uh, Though, you know, and those are really good options for baby greens. A really good option for baby greens is no mulch at all and that you're just kind of still cultivating the soil like you usually would, but you're just taking a bed out of production. And we'll talk about bed flips all year this year. It's gonna be a big conversation, but you take a bed out of production and then you can put it back into production without adding a bunch more compost or a bunch of material over top. Uh, so that's an option, or you can go with a deep mulch system. Whereas if you're growing a lot of bro broccoli, brassicas, you know, things that you're transplanting more uh, and you're not relying on a cedar, you do have a little bit more flexibility in mulches and um, in bed preparation. It doesn't have to be quite as smooth, so you can use rougher looking composts. Uh, you don't even, the previous crop can just be cut out at the base level and you can just stick the next crop in in between those crops. Um, you have a lot of options in terms of your flexibility in that sense. And if you're doing lower profit crops, maybe, like you wanna do sweet corn or you wanna do uh, you know, melons or something like that, you wouldn't wanna spend a bunch of money on a cover on a compost cover. You'd wanna find something that's cheap and effective, that still blocks the weeds, that does all, has all the added benefits of no-till, but does not cost a lot of money and ultimately hurt your margins on those crops. You really have to think about those numbers. I wanna talk a little bit about resources. Resources are important. You need to know where to go to find good information. So notillgrowers.com is a resource that we're creating. And obviously these videos, we want these videos to be a good resource for you. I recommend subscribing to Growing for Market Magazine. Use the offer code no-till and you get 20% discount. That's cool, like that. They are a sponsor of our show, but they've been print. The reason that we want them to be a sponsor is they've been publishing no-till articles for years, for years before it was cool. So they are a great resource. Go check them out. Go check out notillgrowers.com. We're go check out the forum there. Andrew Mefford's new book, who is the editor of Growing for Market, he did uh, the Organic No-Till Farming Revolution. Great book. You have to get that if you're at all interested in no-till growing. Oh, the Never Sink Farm Course. We are an affiliate with Connor. Connor's a big supporter of the podcast. And uh, if you use our link, he kicks a few bucks back to the show. So go check out the Never Sink Farm Course. That is another really, really exceptional resource. And then otherwise, let me know what you guys think. 
If you all have any different ideas or different things, different considerations, please leave them in the comments. We get lots of great comments on this channel. I'm very thankful for that. Leave positive comments, good criticisms. I love all that stuff. So please feel free to add your insight. Any opinions you have about no-till or no-till methods or different no-till things I didn't touch on or different considerations, please put that below. Like this video if you like this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Check out the Patreon page, patreon.com slash Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.